Greetings everyone, it's Hammerzite, uh, Hammerzite number three that is. Um, today I'm going to talk about this Stahlvilla Mechanics Hammer, uh, I think it's what they listed as on um, uh, where I bought it from, uh, Mr. Worker. So some time ago I did a uh, tool unboxing, tool haul video and I mentioned this hammer, it was one of the ones I got in. Um, I said in that video I wasn't going to do a separate video about it, but I changed my mind. And the reason is, uh, it's, it's kind of an interesting hammer, actually. A couple of things that are kind of interesting about it. So, without further ado, let's get into it. <clears throat> uh, this is listed as a 300 gram Stahl Villa um, mechanics hammer, um, at least on uh, Mr. Worker's site where I bought it from. Uh, it's a pretty decent little hammer. It's got a pretty good feel in the hand. It's listed as having a three component handle. Uh, you've got this piece, and then you think, oh, well, this is the other component. Well, that's actually not true. There's another, and I'll get to that in a bit. Um, let's get some dimensions out of the way. First things first, it is 300 millimeters long, which is roughly 12 inches. Um, and then the head itself is listed as about 22 and a half millimeters. Um, let's see, the weight is, I weighed it before, it was about... 477 grams total. The head weight is 300 grams. Uh, so <clears throat> there's some interesting things if you start taking a look at this hammer. Um, first things you notice is, of course, it's got this wonderful Stahlvilla logo here, and then it's got one here. And it uh, doesn't have anything on the other side, but if you flip it over, you get a barcode, and then you have a part number, which is, let's see if I can read it, ART10975-300. Um, some other things that are fascinating about it is if you look on here and yeah, there's a made in Italy up here by this safety thing saying wear some goggles. Um, there's also here embedded in the um, uh, handle is a word which is assuming I'm saying this right it's Italian called brevitato uh, which in Italian means patented so it's kind of interesting it says made in Italy like wait a minute you know, I got to thinking about that. I said, well, that's kind of odd. I don't know that Stahlvilla has any plant or anything. It produces anything out of Italy. I mean, nothing, there's nothing wrong with that. I just, I don't, I'm not aware of it. Their stuff's either made in Germany or they have some stuff they produce in Taiwan, like their ratcheting wrenches, for example, uh, which they have made on contract. So this, this kind of stood out as an oddity to me. And uh, what I'll do is I'll uh, get in here real quick and I'll focus hopefully it'll focus there it is so you can see up close there's the made in Italy there's the the logo and here's the um, if you can see it the brevitato assuming I'm saying that correctly and if I'm not I apologize for that um, now the other thing that's interesting is what's on the top so we'll get into the hammer itself and what it's made of and I will try to zoom in a bit on that and this is the foundry mark. Hopefully you'll find it. Hopefully that's in focus. Uh, if you notice in there, it has OSCA, and then it has 300, and then it has DIN, and I think that reads uh, 1041. Sorry. Um, so the DIN 1041 is going to be the DIN standard that this hammer is made to. And uh, the other, the OSCA 300, 300 is obviously the weight of the head, and the OSCA is actually stands for OSCA, which we'll come back to in a second. So let me put this back down here, zoom, keep it about right here, and then focus. So, okay, made in Italy, OSCA or OSCA, that's kind of a clue. And if you actually go do some digging, you'll find out that this hammer is actually made by a company called OSCA, which that stands for something that I cannot pronounce because it's in Italian, but you can go look it up. You look up, if you search on Google for say OSCA 300, and I'll have a link in the description to this, the entry for this particular hammer, you'll find OSCA hammers. They are a hammer manufacturer that they say on their site, and I have no reason to doubt them, that they make completely make their hammers in Italy in their um, production facility uh, and everything's made there by their people and they've been in business I think I read on their site since 1969 so they've been around a while they're pretty well respected from what I can tell they produce pretty good stuff and uh, if this Oscar here if you actually go search and like I said if I, I'll have a link you'll find this exact hammer and I mean exact hammer with the only difference being that instead of Stahlvilla 
It has Oscar's uh, marketing and labeling and whatnot. So this is the, I think it's the ART2100 hammer on their website. That's what this is. Um, so kind of interesting. Um, basically what this bull, what this means is, is this is a hammer that Stavella has contracted with Asuka to produce. Um, I have noticed that you, at least from the catalog that I have available and I've downloaded, you will not find this hammer in that catalog from Stavella. Uh, I have found it on Mr. Worker's site, of course, because that's where I bought it from. And I've seen it in a couple other places out in Europe. And it's listed as a promo item, so I'm guessing this is just something they're doing in very limited markets in certain areas. So, anyway, that's kind of the explanation for it. Um, if we go over a few things about it, obviously we can see the handle itself. Let's go back to it. And if you go look at Asuka's site, they just, they just go into detail about some of the things about this hammer. Uh, it is patented. Uh, which, of course, we can tell by the Brevitato, uh, but they list it as being patented on their site. Um, one of the interesting things about it is they have the three-component handle, which is not these three pieces. Uh, well, they refer to three-component, they're talking about there's actually three different materials making this ha uh, handle up. There's obviously this kind of rubbery gripped thing, which is actually really nice. It's got a good feel. Uh, it's also up here, the same material in the, in the collar. And then you've got this fiberglass piece here. And then they list in the end, which you're going to be out of focus again for a second. Uh, if you look at the end here, you'll see there's this little kind of plastic cover. Well, apparently, you can't really tell, but there's an aluminum rod that runs all the way in to apparently all the way up to here. Uh, and that's the third component of this handle. Um, and I guess they provide that for stability and, and whatnot. So kind of interesting. That's the construction itself. And of course, you've got the head, uh, you know, 300 grams, uh, so forth, have, looks like some kind of epoxy, uh, plastic resin, something in here to help hold that in place. Um, well, let's see, what else can we talk about this hammer? Uh, in terms of quality, it is excellent. Um, there is, uh, I haven't seen anything that I would say is, a, you know, out of the ordinary manufacturing defect. Uh, the logo itself on here is pristine and perfect it's very crisp same thing here in the metal head it's just well done honestly uh the um fiberglass itself seems to be you know it's molded well and produced this rubber over molding grip is is on there firmly it feels really good honestly this this hammer it feels excellent to be quite frank i really like the way it feels in my hand it's got a good balance um, and whatnot, and um, the other thing that's interesting is, you know, the head itself. It's it's an unusual pattern for me. You know, over here I'm used to more like something like this cheap task force hammer. This, of course, this is kind of a carpentry hammer. It's only 12 ounce, but you can see it's roughly similar in size, a little shorter, and it has a wooden handle. Uh, ironically, this is advertised as made in. Uh, American Hickory, but this is a hammerhead made in China, so one has to doubt if this is actually American Hickory or... Yeah, anyway, we're not here to talk about that hammer. Um, so, uh, again, this comes back to the whole thing of, okay, well, this actually isn't made by Stavilla, it's made by Asuka. Um, and that's no big deal. Again, you know, contract, tool companies contract to make have other companies make tools for them all the time. This isn't anything out of the ordinary. Uh, if you saw my um, um, video I had recently about the hot set combination ratcheting wrenches, you know that that's pretty common. Actually, they do that all the time. Hot set, for example, has theirs made. Stalvella has their ratcheting wrenches made for somebody else, and so forth. It's it's actually pretty common. And one other thing that's kind of interesting is you'll see lots of other hammer makers that have hammers that look exactly like this. And that is a result, of course, of the fact that these guys build to a DIN specification. And if you build to a spec, the specification is going to tell you, well, this has to be the size of this particular type of hammer. These are the dimensions. This is the weight of the head. Um, there's only a certain amount of variance that they can actually um, have in their product uh, you know, that for them to be able to claim that they can meet the spec, in this case, the DIN 24, uh, 1041 specification. So they, they have to do that. It's going to look the same. 
there's only certain areas of innovation that they can have, like type of how they harden the steel, how they finish it for their head, uh, you know, the handle material itself, how it's made, the level of quality for this, which, like I said, for this hammer is excellent. Um, and so this is why it's going to end up looking very much like all these others. And like you can see, Ghidorah and Hots, that they'll have hammers very similar to this, quite frankly. Um, other things about it in terms of quality, uh, like the face is very machined very well. It's got a slight dome. They have a nice um, relief cut out here around the edges. Um, though I did notice that they were still sharp. They weren't kind of rounded like you would think, like say maybe like with this. But it is kind of a square head, so maybe that's normal. Uh, they have the back side, which is kind of a cross peen. Uh, I'm not used to this. It's, uh, but you know, I, I would say that this is what you need. This this will certainly work for that. Um, let's see, anything else to really talk about with it? Um, oh, one other thing that's interesting is I bought this for a pretty good price, and it's still there. You can still pick it up from um, Mr. Worker. I think I paid like $16, $17, which is not a bad price. Ironically, I found, I said, well, I wonder if I bought this as an Oscar hammer, what it would cost. I actually thought it would cost more, and the reality is... I actually, I'm taking that back. I actually thought it would cost less because you would think, hey, if Oscar's selling this hammer themselves, yeah, their price is probably cheaper. I was wrong. It is actually a lot more. I saw this hammer, except as an Oscar hammer, for around $29, uh, which is quite frankly pretty pricey. I mean, this makes this a, an excellent deal, to be honest. So, uh, anyway, um, that's pretty much about it for this uh, hammer. It's, uh, I would say that if you need this type of hammer, this is an excellent one to buy. It's certainly worth it if you can get it um, and the deal, like the deal I got from Mr. Worker. And I'll have a link in the description so you can see that. But if you like this style hammer, and and this one is is one that I would definitely consider advising taking a good look at. So anyway, that's it for this video. Hope you enjoyed it. And if you do, you can like, comment, and uh, subscribe. As always, thanks for watching.